everyone. Welcome to Yoga with Edith. This is a 20 minute yoga for runners practice. This practice is designed to do immediately after a run or maybe a few hours later once your muscles start to feel a little bit tighter. So our focus today will be opening the quads, your hamstrings, calves, and glutes. Um, in a longer practice, we'll have more time to focus on opening the chest and strengthening your back as well. There are no props required for this class, uh, just yourself. Uh, you could even do it right on the grass if you want to. Okay, so let's start in a seated position. Come into cross legs. If your knees are high, you might feel better sitting on a water bottle or a block, something to help elevate the hips. All right, take a full breath in and a breath out. Inhale to arrive. Exhale to land in your seat. Take a full breath and reach your arms up to the ceiling. And on the exhale, bring your left hand in front of you. The right hand could come behind you just like a kickstand. You can also bring your hand onto your left knee or the right knee. Breathe in to sit up tall. Now as you exhale, pull your belly button into your spine. Lengthen up, give yourself some space between the vertebrae. And as you exhale, activate your upper back. Feel your shoulder blade wrap around your spine. Good, breathe in, unravel just a little. Now exhale to deepen this twist. Back hand is just there to help prop and support your spine. All right, now come back to the center, big breath in, reach up to the sky, the sun, the sky, all good. Exhale, twist in the opposite direction. Use the hands to prop. Take a full breath in to sit up tall. Exhale to twist. You can bring your hand to the opposite knee. And just notice what's happening with that left shoulder. Is it rolling forward? Try to draw it back. Now this motion is less about the arms and the hands pulling you into shape. Try to engage the muscles of your body. Breathe in, lengthen. Twist more on the exhale. Okay. All right, come back through the center. Make your way into tabletop position for downward facing dog. So tabletop and lift the knees. Pedal it out. Keep pressing your hands down and forward. Lift your hips up and back. So let's dig right into the calves here. Bend your left knee, press your right heel towards the floor. We're still in that nice inverted V-shaped position. Keep pressing the hands down, lift the tailbone up high. Maybe even soften the right knee a little. See how that changes the stretch into the Achilles tendon in the back of the heel. Good, now straighten out the legs. Take a breath in, come up high onto your toes. Exhale, bend the right knee. Work your left heel towards the mat. And keep pressing down. Ooh. One side might feel a little bit tighter than the other. Now, yeah, that, that can just be the way it is, right? Be pretty boring if you were the same on both sides all the time. And now take a breath in, come up high onto your toes. Exhale to walk yourself forward. Cross your right ankle behind your left. Take a breath in, lengthen your chest. Exhale to fold. Now we're getting more into the IT band, the outer hip. So see if you could press the balls of your feet into the mat. Now to deepen this, walk your hands over to the left side of your space. Take a breath in, lengthen your chest. Exhale, fold. Keep pressing down through the balls of your feet. Head is heavy. Good. 
Good, inhale to come back to the center, uncross the ankles, switch sides, the left ankle behind the right. Take a breath in, lengthen your chest. Exhale, fold. Now walk your hands over to the right side of your space. Keep pressing into the inside arches of the feet so the feet are nice and grounded. And just a little movement of the bones in your feet that helps to, to enhance the stretch. Mm -hmm. Okay, come back to the center, uncross the feet. Take a breath in, halfway lift. Bow in, exhale. Now roll yourself up, take your time. You can walk your hands up, one vertebrae at a time. The head is the last to come up. Bring your hands onto your hips. Feet are hip-width distance apart. Bend your knees. Step back with your right foot. So your right foot is turned to two o'clock. Feet are hip-width distance apart. Now you can bring your hands onto the hips. Pull the left hip back, right hip forward. Take a full breath in. Reach your arms up. Exhale to sink down. Give our chest a little TLC here. Interlace the hands behind you. In. Take a breath in, exhale, hug the shoulder blades around your spine. Stay strong through the midsection too. So as you roll the chest back, the ribs can puff forward, but knit the ribs together and stay connected to the core of your body. Look up to the ceiling. Two more breaths. Now inhale to reach up, straighten out your front knee. Bring your hands onto your hips. Left hip back, right hip forward. Exhale to tip. Walk your hands down your front leg. Now you might even be able to bring your hands all the way down to the mat, but keep your, your feet anchored so the heels pressing into the earth. Step into the outer edge of your right foot. Hmm. Now lift all 10 toes. Activate the shins, the fronts of your legs. Hmm. Couple more breaths here. Now, I, I like to make sound in the poses just because it really helps to relax and sigh. And you can feel a lot from just making little sound like that. All right, walk yourself up, bring your hands onto the quad, roll up. Hands to your hips, bend the back knee, step forward. Other side, take a breath in. Exhale to bend your knees, step back with your left foot. This time the left toes are turned to 10 o'clock. Take a big breath in, reach your arms up. Exhale to sink down. Now you should not feel this in your low back. If you're feeling this in the low back, it means that you're dropping into the tummy, so contain that engagement. Lengthen through the tailbone. Right hip back, left hip forward. Take a full breath in. Exhale to interlace your hands behind you. Soften through the elbows and feel the upper back work to open the chest. Hands are just a few inches away from the low back. Keep pressing into the back heel. Good, now inhale to reach your arms back up to the sky. Straighten out your front knee. Hands come onto your hips. Right hip back, left hip forward. Take a full breath in, open up the chest. Exhale to fold. Walk your hands down the front leg. Option to bring your fingertips right to the floor. Take a breath in, lengthen. Exhale to bow. And the weight of your head drops, neck is relaxed. Lengthen through your right side and compress down as you exhale. Might even walk the hands a little bit further behind the ankle and the foot. Try this, fire up your quad, fire up the front of your right thigh. See how that feels in your hamstrings. Oh, there are the hamstrings, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, so plant your palms flat. 
Hands come onto the front thigh, come all the way up, hands to hips, bend the knees, step forward. Inhale, reach up, exhale to fold. Inhale, stretch the chest, and the hands to the mat, bend your knees a lot. Take a big step back with your right foot. This time, heel toe, heel toe, your left foot to the outside of your hands so that both of your hands are on the inside of the front knee. Drop your back knee to the mat. Take a breath in, exhale to sink down. So now we're moving into the hip flexors, those deeper muscles there. Notice your breathing. And the beauty of our breath is that when we can time the breath, so if we inhale for a count of three and exhale for a count of three, that can help to also regulate our heart rate and really draw things down. So like the moments that you're in a big race, the first big surge, you can really feel how much your heart has to work to get your your temperature and, and the heart rate to balance out. So breath work is fantastic for that. So let's just do a few more breaths here, counting an equal inhale for three and an equal exhale for three. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale three, two, one. Inhale three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Good, now inhale, straighten up the front knee, heel toe, heel toe, the foot onto the inside of your hands, and we'll take a halfway split, half splits. Take your breath and lengthen your chest. Exhale to fold. Okay, let's master that three-part breath here. So inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale into the hamstring, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Okay, bend the front knee. Lift the back knee up, walk your hands all the way over. So now we're gonna turn to the back of the mat, drop your left knee down, heel toe, heel toe, your right foot out to the side. So now both hands are on the inside of the right knee. Take a breath in, exhale to sink down. And nice and deep into the hip flexors. These tight little guys here, they get really wound up, especially if you go in for a long run. Long, long runs, we tend to really compensate in the front of the body. But in these movements, these stretches, you'll be able to stand taller. And what does that mean when we stand taller with running is that we could breathe more excessively. So we can breathe fully, feel the entire torso fill with breath. So two more breaths in that three count pace. Exhale, three, two, one. One more time. Inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Good, heel toe, heel toe, the right foot between your hands, vertical, oh sorry, half split. Take a breath in, lengthen your chest, full. Breathe in, bow a little bit deeper on the exhale. Stay active in the front of the leg, it's much like our biceps and triceps. When one is flexing, the other will lengthen. Think of flexing the two muscles in the front of your leg, the shin and the quad. And all right, bend the front knee, lift the back knee up, walk your hands forward, heel toe, heel toe the feet a little closer together, and we'll hang out here. Hmm. 
let the head be nice and heavy. So you could bend the knees so there's softness in the knees. Now these semi-inversions, these poses where the head is below the heart, they're really great ways to uh, turn the energy upwards. So maybe you're just about to go into race or maybe you need to rebalance um, your energy. This is a good pose to come into. All right, so halfway lift, lengthen your chest, turn your left toes to the front of your mat, walk your hands forward. Let's come right into pigeon from here. So left leg, let's sweep the left leg up and back and relax the foot down. Other side, inhale, right leg up, tuck your knee behind your right wrist, left leg slides back. If the hip is high, you can always squish a towel or maybe a sweater underneath your hip to balance it out. Crawl your way down, or you could stay up, whichever feels good. Staying upright feels pretty good in the left hip flexor, so if you're still feeling pretty tight there, that might feel nice. Or if you just want to relax through, you can let your chest come down. back up onto your hands, downward dog, other side, left leg up, tuck your knee behind the left wrist, right leg squeaks back behind you, breathe in, open your chest, exhale to come down, lowering the elbows if that feels good on the side, or you can stay up on the hands, so receiving the stretch into the front of your right hip as well. Come back up onto your hands, curl the back toes under, lift your hips, down dog. Bring your knees down, swing your legs all the way up in front of you. Soles of your feet together, let the knees drop open. Take a breath in, lengthen up. Exhale to fold forward. Grab hold of your feet or maybe walk the hands ahead of your shins. Now, try to keep the low back long. Inhale to lengthen. Fold on the exhale. You can even turn the soles up of your feet up to the sky. It's like you're reading a book. And tip forward with the pubic bone. Come back up, help your knees up to center, stretch your legs out. You can start with the knees slightly bent, flex your toes, take a breath in, reach up, fold, grab hold of your shins, your ankles, or the balls of your feet, then walk your hips back. Try to keep your belly and your ribs on your thighs. Take a breath in, lift the chest, exhale to fold. Now, the other day I was practicing yoga with a friend and we were talking about how he wasn't able to grab his feet, couldn't grab his feet for a long time. And just over the course of a year or so, year and a half, he was able to grab his toes for the first time in 40 years. It's pretty awesome. Take a breath in, lengthen the chest, fold a little bit deeper. Shoulders down your back, keep the upper back active. Hmm. Come all the way up and come onto your back for final Shavasana. If you want to add a little twist here, you're absolutely welcome to. Kick back, relax. Let your arms come out from the body. Just oscillate your head from side to side. Feel the ridges of your skull. Tuck the shoulder blades underneath you. 
lengthen your tailbone so that your, your glutes relax on the mat too. Let your breath come back to its natural pace. Like you're telling a quiet whisper or a secret to the room. This does conclude our yoga for runners practice today. You are welcome to take as long as you need in Shavasana. Take all the time you need. It's an honor and a pleasure to guide you through your practice. From my heart to yours, namaste.